What you can do in a Norwegian accent is to like say words that are not words. <laughs> like food <laughs> food hoo doo doo. Hey everybody, welcome to another installment of Saga Saturday. So excited. It's been a while. Um, it is now January 2nd, 2019, the beginning of the year. This is our first working day of the year. And man, I'm so excited to be here. Angelo is making slider parts right now. Uh, last weekend, I had a revelation about difficulties we've been having with that regarding SFM. So we're gonna talk about that. And uh, he's doing kind of the final throws of our prototyping on this part, which we can then ease into production. I mean, maybe we can even make 50 or 100 parts of this right now so that we have them for the future for production because I, I want to sell sagas. So let's jump right in. So right now we're making the slider for the pen, which is what uh, you kind of slide down to release the mechanism. Very tricky internal dimensions. Uh, so we did one, made a bunch last Friday and they were all weird, but we're fine tuning. I'll explain in a little bit um, the changes we got to make. But right now I'm making the second part of the day. I tweaked a couple wear uh, dimensions so that hopefully the next one will be much better tolerances. So I'm looking at Sky's pen right now. And um, so we're making the slider on the lathe and I'm kind of, I'm just being ever so slightly picky with how it feels and where it catches and how it actuates. And as I release it, I feel this little catch. And I'm trying to wonder to myself what that catch is. It's obviously the shape of the inside where the there's three ball bearings in here and they where they go up and they catch so i might take this apart look at it under the microscope and just kind of wonder where that's from i don't think it's from where i think it's just from a bad part i mean when we made the first batch they're not bad they're just like they could be better so as we're making more we want them to be better second part of the day um I'm measuring one of the internal tolerances. You could use calipers like this, and they're close, but they're not that accurate. What works really well is a gauge pin. This is an end mill, but you measure this. It's a 375 end mill, but it measures 3748, just two tenths under, which is our tolerance, as I'm checking my drawing here, is 375 plus or minus one thou. So this guy just barely fits in, which makes it a perfect, perfect fit on size, basically. Um, very happy with that dimension. And I don't have gauge pins yet for these other weird sizes, like 0 0.400. Bang on. Pretty much, maybe a hair big, but within tolerance. And it's starting to look a lot better. Like. I want little chamfers in here. I want a big radius there. So just looking at them side by side, we don't have a macro lens yet. Um, otherwise we'd get real close. Old one on the left, new one on the right. So as I've talked about before, I, I've never really worked from drawings before, whereas this guy has a lot. Um, and he's converted me because this is a complicated part. There's a lot of dimensions we gotta like really dial down and they're all critical like if any of these are off by ever so slightly the pen doesn't work um, so having a central place that just shows everything and we can dial in like okay we're measuring that what is that oh plus or minus got it yeah. um, depth of that depth of that you got your key dimension key dimension key dimension i've seen people uh, use a highlighter yep. to highlight all this stuff um, because this is your this is your map yeah, this exactly. is your, as you're making the part. Plus, sometimes we'll have to manipulate our tolerances to suit like the assembly. Yeah. And then we're moving from a uh, model-based definition to a drawing-based definition, and we're using this to kind of as our final. So as you're making the part, this is your this is what's important. And yeah, then if it, you draw yeah. that, if you if you change something then you give this back to the programmer. Yeah, it depends on basically. How, how we would, like if it's a drawing based definition or a model based definition part coming from our, our client. Right, yeah. We're, we're making it. yeah, we're making ourselves. So, but if we need to change something here, 
you can scribble on this, yes. and then we'll go back into Fusion, yes. we'll change it, we'll update the drawing properly. Yeah, because we're then, prototyping right now, so. Right. Because in the past, I would do everything from Fusion, I would measure it in Fusion, I'd look yeah. and be like, I wouldn't have this. There's I'd be like, oh, forward. Fusion, yeah. yeah. Another nice feature, or another nice thing about having drawings here is that if uh, John's not here right now, we only have one computer that we're utilizing. Yeah. So, you know, if you're not here, or if, you know, you're busy, or you're taking that, a drawing allows me to make changes or to check stuff right at the machine. Um, whereas if, you know, until we get a computer set up for here, yeah. then kind of we just kind of put it up on the wall and... Yeah, we were putting together a binder of all our drawings with, you know, certain, you know, so we have a knife binder, we're going to have a pen binder, and we're going to have all the details. Yep. Right now we're starting to use shop notes using ProShop that gives us our setup notes so we remember every time. Um, so yeah, streamlining our processes and keeping our data up front where it needs to be. Yeah. And we got a new tool cart. Got that, uh, it's on super sale from Canadian Tire half price. So it's the perfect time to get it. And I like it. It's our lathe tool cart now. You got all the inserts there, um, all the collets, check that out. Love it. Yeah, before we had to kind of move around the shop, we had a very limited amount of space to work on. Yeah, this was like our lathe working area, was this corner. And now we don't have to, now we can do it here. Stickering it up already. We got some other knife makers here. Yeah, it looks like you guys have had that for ages now. I know. It's already got a little sticker. Yeah. So if you guys want to send us some stickers, let us know. <laughs> yeah, uh, vinyl though. Yeah, vinyl stickers. So here is where we have our parts set up for this, this job, the slider. So this is in the Pro Shop ERP software, which I haven't talked about at all, but I will this year. Um, we took pictures. We say you need this subspinal collet, you need this ejector pin, you need to stick it out 1115-ish. Uh, these are the two boring bars. And, it'll, and these are all the setup notes, like use this, do this, do this, move this out here, set it up there. It's just super good. So Angelo can pull this up, set up the lathe before I even get in, and then it's like ready to run parts. And then before too long, once we're in production, then he can just make parts. I don't even have to be here, which is awesome. Or I can make parts and he doesn't have to be here. And then it gives us a place to like, if we need to communicate back and forth and have a record of everything. So that's awesome. So how close are we on that part? Is it a good part? It's, so far it seems good. I got it. There's certain dimensions I, I need to bust out the indicators for. Okay. But I think we're, for this purpose, it's fine. I think Sweet. most of this is just letting us know what we kind of need, which we know we're going to, we're achieving here. Right? Yeah. So we know that we're going to be concentric to this. Right? Yeah. The concern now is, is this side concentric to this side? Yeah. And that's, that's going to affect our assembly. You could test that in the subspindle, yeah. like when it's done but not spit out yet, because yeah. then you can indicate the old turn side and the new turn exactly. side. So we could do that. V block Is indicator. it hard with the pattern or anything? It, as long as, because I'm checking the inside to here, so as long as my inside is reading zero, okay. and then I come down here and it's reading zero, Yeah. right? As long as I'm qualifying a surface, then it, it should be okay. I was also thinking we should make I want to make one to our min dimensions and one to our max dimensions so that when we yeah. assemble, yep. see how it feels, how it, how it interacts yeah. with the pen differently. Because uh, I noticed that when it's assembled and you click it, on some of our pens, the slider goes up a lot more. Yeah. And in, in Fusion, it's supposed to go up a lot more. And we never measured a single, like we, we measured a few items yeah. on our prototype. Product. But not, not as far as we're doing yeah. now. So these two are about the same, but some of the other pens we've made, they go up higher. Yeah. And this is all like, yeah. we want consistency. And we need to figure out what, so we're making key dimensions because that's essentially critical for the functioning of the part yeah. and how they're all gonna stack up together. Certain things like, you know, little radiuses and whatnot that are more aesthetic, um, you can visually see if they're gonna be usable or not. So the other thing we might be doing with this part and, uh, which other part? The button, but well, yeah. most of the button. But we've got this bar of nickel aluminum bronze, which this guy tells me is pretty awesome stuff. Uh, very high, low wear bearing surface, yeah, right? It's a wear surface. It was expensive and difficult to get. We have a lot more, but we might test making some sliders from this once we get our dimension dialed in. Mm -hmm. See if changing from titanium to nickel aluminum bronze uh, changes our dimensions for any reason, yeah, tool pressure or whatever. Changes. We also want to see how it's going to wear uh, with the 
we have ceramic ball bearings inside, so we want to see how that's going to behave with it. Yeah, um, it, it's it should be a better thing than tie for. It's going to gall less. It's not yeah. as gummy. Um, so, so what you're saying is you want one on your pen by the end of the day. Yeah, and we'll see how it functions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I use it a lot, and there's a lot of this pen's probably gone through, you know, ten thousand clicks yeah. or something. <laughs> a lot of clicks. Ten thousand hours, ten thousand clicks. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see how it functions, and you know. It's softer than the tie, um, but it's got very good wear resistant properties. So the, adding the nickel to aluminum bronze essentially adds a lot of, of wear resistance. So um, we've used it for wear plates on total ray handling systems and uh, you know bushings for massive, massive uh, assemblies. So yeah, it should be good. I'm curious to see how it turns out. It's very pretty. It's yeah, very cool looking material. So be nice to put on something where it's, you know, we don't have to titanium nitride coat it or, or put a PVD coating on it. We can just use the the raw material, the substrate as your you know, the aesthetic. It'll look awesome. Yeah. So like you can see it looks like brass here or gold or whatever. Yeah. And then here it's been just tarnished with yeah. air. Uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't actually oxidize. It should be extremely oxidized. It's not gonna patina the same way. No? No, I think that's when they're rolling it. I think it might be pulling some of the nickel out to the, and the aluminum out to the surface a little more. But we can do some tests to yep. see how it patinas. You can even force a patina. Yeah, we'll see how it behaves because the nickel changes it significantly. Cool. So most watches are using like aluminum bronze because they want to be able to patina it. Okay. Um, whereas this is more expensive, harder to work with, but it's a stronger material and it's, I think it looks a lot better. Yeah. You know? Can't wait so, to see it. Yeah. All right. You're going to make some more parts. Yep. Aaron and I are going to talk about SFM. So Aaron's asking me what, what SFM means, um, and it's a good chance for me to explain it. I am absolutely no expert. You need someone like John Saunders to explain this kind of stuff. Um, surface feet per minute, you need like diagrams and stuff. But basically, it's, it's the RPM that the machine is spinning while it's cutting the tool. So the surface speed. So I was thinking, if you look at this piece right here, it is, you know, I don't know, one and a quarter inch outside diameter, three quarter inch inside diameter. As you remember from math class, circumference, if you measure the outside of this, is gonna be a lot more distance than the inside of this. So if you turn this bar at 3000 RPM, you're gonna have a much different surface feet per minute, the distance in feet per minute on the outside as you will on the inside at that fixed RPM. And that's the problem I was having with making that part. It's just, it was a stupid guess of 3000 RPM. So on the machines, you can do something called uh, constant surface speed, CSS. So you go, I want 40 SFM no matter what. And you let the machine figure out what RPM to spin it at. So it's doing it right now. It's at roughly 400 RPM, but every pass is gonna be at a different diameter. So now it's at, 380 and it's going to gently go up to 48. So depending on the contours inside the machine that it's doing up, it's going to alter the speed to like make it perfect. Um, and that's how you get the best finish and the best tool life and the best even tool pressure among the whole cut because your SFM is now constant as the part gets bigger and smaller. Whereas a fixed RPM is not, it's not that you're cheating it. You're not giving it the right cutting speed that it wants. Maybe that makes sense. If not, Google. So cutting the internal dimensions of this slider, we're using these tiny little, I mean, there's my fingers, tiny little carbide inserts. Um, they're made by Kyocera. They uh, have a 0.156 IC, which is basically the diameter among all the three sides. Three cutting edges. It's called a W series insert. Uh, so it's nice because you break one insert, you just rotate it, touch it off again, and keep running. So this little guy basically goes in here and allows you to bore the inside to the exact diameter that you want. It gets mounted, I don't have an extra tool, they're in the machine right now, but it gets mounted to a tool kind of about that size so that it can go in there and bore the inside. So here is what the inside profile of this part looks like. It gets turned from one side, and then later it gets turned from the other side. Um, very delicate, very sharp little tool. And it turns out that I've been using very bad habits for this tool and many other tools, where 
you know, back in the Tormac days, I would just run everything at 3000 RPM. I was like, it works, whatever, 3000 RPM, everything gets run at 3000, it's fine. Um, basically, when we made the first batch of 30 pens, uh, we were blowing inserts every like three parts. And we didn't have time back in May 2018 to really dig into it. So we would just replace the insert and make another part and then replace the insert and make a couple more and just kind of brute force our way through it. Not ideal, now we're paying the price, now we're doing it right. Um, but it turns out that 3000 is completely the wrong answer. So I did the math and I looked up the surface footage based on this diameter and the, um, and the size of the tool and the, the material, titanium, and it's cutting at about 290 SFM, which is ridiculously high. Titanium is usually 140, uh, it usually works really well for most titanium, so 290 is already more than double. And uh, I looked through all the Kyocera catalogs and found out they actually recommend for such a delicate small tool doing tight tolerance you know, work in hard materials, they actually recommend a 40 SFM, which is way, 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 way less than 290. So basically we're burning the insert. It's like if you rub your hand against carpet this fast, it doesn't hurt. But if you rub it like this, it gets really abrasive and really, really a lot of heat and a lot of damage to your hand. Um, so that's what's happening to the insert. Let's get this under the microscope and we'll get uh, a few close-ups of what the broken edge looks like so you can see. All right, so I'm putting it on this V-block on my Leica microscope, which I love. Got to find it. So here is our insert, if I can get it to focus, there we go, close enough. So that's kind of the broad view. If you look closely at the tips, you can see that they are chipped away. It's really hard to focus just through the eyepiece. So let me go a bit closer at one of the edges. There you go, look at that. So the edge is just chipped away and gone and not there anymore and all three edges basically look exactly like that Let's see if i can move to another edge here that one does look a little bit different but equally bad and that one too just gone and this kept happening and happening and happening and uh, we just didn't know why but now that I figured out the SFM thing, taking it down from 290 to 40, which is ridiculously slow, takes it from like a 25 second op to a two and a half minute op, that kind of sucks. We can improve over time. Um, but for right now, I want to do it by the book, see what Kyocera says, try it out. Uh, we're having great success. We'll see what the longevity is after we make 10, 20, 50 parts, and then uh, go from there. But this was one of the biggest hurdles that I've had with actually making the pen because I knew this was not a sustainable process blowing through inserts like that so i'm very pumped um over the christmas holiday i was able to crunch this through and figure it out and i'm excited that it's working right now so that's good that means pens are coming very 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 soon oh, i was going to do that so much more dramatically <laughs> quick let's do it again <laughs> And that wraps up another episode of Saga Saturday. Uh, very, very excited with the progress that we made. Angelo is making uh, five or 10 parts right now, get our min and our max, and then we can assemble, probably on this one or his, um, assemble the parts and see, make sure that we know what our min and our max are for several different parts combined so that we know that they work. Because I want every single pen to work. I want to be able to make parts and parts and parts and parts. So very excited for that. And uh, I think at this point, it just deserves a little mic drop. Peace.